Greetings once again, heroes and villains out there. Dudes, these been back again with My Hero Academia, where previously, despite having lost danger sense to Tomura, Deku continues to use his tried and true abilities to try to blow back Tomura Shigaraki's decay. And though Deku uses his knowledge of Black Whip to try to overwhelm Tomura, Tomura has adapted to it well, evading Deku's every move. It even becomes the clash of ideal, with Tomura saying that he is buried Tenko, and that only Tomura Shigaraki remains, and that all Deku is doing is trying to push his ideals on to Tomura. And while Nano starts to believe that maybe there is no saving Tomura, and beseeches Deku to just finish the boy, Deku stands firm in the belief that all Tomura has done is put a bottle on that young boy, and he plans to smash that lid wide open, something surprisingly Kudo agrees with. As deep within Tomura Shigaraki, since you can see into each other's vestiges, despite it seemingly have been having been destroyed, the vestige of Star and Stripe still exists within Tomura, one that points out something deep within Shigaraki, something that upon seeing, gives Kudo a plan. What was it that Kudo saw? How is it that Star and Stripe is still somehow holding on within Tomra to some degree? And will this idea bear fruit? Join me as I find out, won't you? Huh. It's kind of like the vestige of All Might is seeing the memories of Star and Stripe when she was attacking all the quirks within Tomra. Is it that maybe some part of her held on? We saw that before her vestige faded away, she saw Tomra, well, Tenko, I should say, being held deep within some light, some hope of humanity. Right, that small boy still existing within. And yeah, sure enough, the vestige of Star and Stripe calls out, Master, there's a forlorn little boy inside here. And we see where Tomura says he buried Tenko. There is a crack. It's small and it's faint, but it's still there. Suddenly, back with all might, out on the rooftop with, with what remains of Edshot, Edshot calls out to him, All Might, All Might, you will meet your end should you drift off now. Remain conscious. All Might is jolted awake. As Edshot tells him, without an earpiece, I do not know the latest news, but Midoriya is likely still battling. All Might thinks to himself as he struggles to his feet. A dream? No. I know this sensation, just like back then, even this far apart, I can feel one for all. This very will finds its way to me. That power we spun together, bit by bit, is coming unraveled. All Might says to Edshot as he looks off into the distance, and we see, over by Mount Fuji, the battle still rages. It's My Hero Academia, number 413, Leiden Mass? Leiden Mass? What does that mean? Leiden? Yeah. Dull or heavy, yeah, okay, so it is le leaden, laden, leaden? I've heard that word before, but it, it's I've, so rare that I'm just like, okay, am, am I saying that right? Regardless, back with Tomra still battling against Deku, he thinks to himself, what the hell was that? How could she be floating through my head? You should have been totally obliterated, as he thinks of Star and Stripe, and he remembers her last words before her vestige faded away. As long as people stand up to save each other, someone will inherit that will of heroism. Tomura then thinks to himself, dead and gone, and yet, your embers dare to haunt me. Meanwhile, Deku who has been sent flying by Tomura. Ooh, he hits the ground and he hits it hard. Skidding to a complete stop, only thanks to him sending out his black whips to stop his momentum. The barely conscious Deku thinks back to All Might's word, you can be a hero. Deku then thinks, Takudo, what do you mean I have to part ways with one for all? Why? Explain it to me second. Kudo tells him, calm your heart or else he'll catch it. Catch wind. That dark mass within Shigaraki, solid as a ball of lead, is made up of every little kernel of anger within him. His frustration, his discontent, and his memories, too. All were drawn together into a single, united mass. It represents his unshakable resolve, a spirit solidified by raw hatred. However, Yagi noticed a rift. It's likely a scar from his battle against Star and Stripe. Not a physical star, scar, but a mental one that refuses to be healed up by his regeneration. Deku asks, what's that got to do with one for all? Kudo tells him, now that he's absorbed all for one, Shigaraki is far too powerful. 
You don't stand a chance pitted a strength, pitting strength against strength. So we attack from within. Oh, I think I know where this is going. Mmm. Okay. Okay. I, I I understand the plan now. You know, it's funny. A lot of people kept kind of dismissing the whole vestiges thing. It's just like, ah, that. Oh, why do we keep using this and this, that, and the other? It's just like, no, no. The whole vestiges thing is the linchpin, as Kudo tells Deku. The transfer of one for all will smash that scar, will pry it open, and give his soul a direct beating. Yeah, because that's what ended up kind of undoing to a certain degree, all for one. Deku asks, the transfer will smash the scar? How? And then shows up, saying, hold on, none of this makes any sense. Transferring one for all will just give him our powers to wield, like how he already absorbed Shinomori. Kudo tells him, I'm using a broader meaning of transfer here try to keep up. All Might's vestige then kind of pops its head in with Kudo saying, hmm, a visualization to get the gist? And it's the explanation All Might gave to Deku when he first got, well, was training for All for One. I mean, One for All, the egg in the microwave. Kudo says, sure, sure. I've got just the right analogy. When that childhood friend of yours hands you things, how does he do it? <laughs> we see an image of Bob go just tossing papers at Deku. Deku's taken off guard. But Kudo says, the right sort of transfer can wound. It can even break the thing being passed. We'll be putting that idea into practice with one for for all itself. Jeez. A brutal transfer of power that will do nothing but harm Shigaraki. Kudo says, but frankly, there's no guarantee it'll work, so I'll be the test run. Remember how only Shinomori was stolen away earlier? If one piece of the whole can be stolen, that suggests that we can also transfer a single piece at a time. We're the factors that are incorporated into one for all. That makes us components of the overall quirk but also special powered up factors in our own right, right? Banjo's explanation that the quirks were not as powerful as they are now. Kudo says, throw me at him hard enough that I shatter into nothing, and I'll serve as an attack without even giving him control over my power. And Panic saying, a test run though, use me and my smoke screen instead. I'm the most useless right now. Kudo says, no, we start with me. Suddenly, we see Shigaraki floating overhead, looking down at Deku, and then says, But gear shift is the cornerstone of this fight. What if this doesn't go as planned? And then Shigaraki has your power on his side. Kudo tells him, Listen, if we don't act now, the boy's dead. Part ways with gear shift, you'll be free of the crippling recoil too. Mmm. Even if by some horrible miracle he can make use of me, the backlash you're feeling right now should transfer to him as well. Really? Huh. Even the repercussion? Dang. Bruce then pops up saying, Leader, I've been with you every step of the way, but this just seems too risky. Kudo tells him, Like I said, it's a bet. A gamble. We lived through cruel times to say the least. When up against the wall, we had to make plenty of callous judgment calls. Nothing could be crueler than this current reality. But even so, this boy refuses to throw in the towel. I want to believe he's got the right idea. And he thinks of Deku's words saying, getting all this help from you all might. I've been blessed. Deku then struggles to get to his feet as Nana appears saying, even at this late hour, it's not that he's reluctant to relinquish power, nor does he fear death, no matter how impossibly daunting a mission he's been charged with. Toshinori, even after coming this far, he still regards one for all and shed a flashback when all, all Might was trying to tell Deku not to think too highly of the power, saying, take this to heart, kid. You've earned this power fair and square. Nana says he still regards one for all as an irreplaceable gift and blessing from the hero he admires most, right? That's the thing. I mean, more than anything else, it's hard to kind of give up something that was a gift, you know? Even if it's being used for all the wrong purposes and could be used for all the wrong purposes and all that, that is a bit of a struggle. But Shigaraki comes racing in saying, what you muttering about down there? Kudo then calls out, Banjo, you stick with the boy to the end. Your black whip is what'll keep him alive. He then looks over to Yuichi saying, Hey, watch over him. Yuichi says, Yes, my hero. Kudo then calls out, Now we just have to hear it from you, Izuku Midoriya. What do you say? And Izuku says, I'll do it. Jeez, that is so wicked. Oh, that is so cool. Now, that is badass. Suddenly, tendrils of black whip come flying out 
severing Shigaraki's hand. A Shigaraki undaunted says, Yeesh, look at you. I never guessed you were a hero. As Shigaraki remembers what he said before, I can tell you're reinforcing your tendons and muscles from the inside. It's clear enough since those black coils show right through your skin. And now those black coils are all throughout his body, almost streaming off of him like it's a brand new suit. It, it's a callback to the Dark Deku moments too, as he has those tendrils flowing out like a cape, but it's also kind of to support him and keep him upright. Oh man, so th even the Dark Deku stuff is coming back in some way. And you even see in Deku's hand, a light shining. It's funny too, because even the way they describe it, it's just like, look, I think we're kind of past the point of you even beating him physically. That comment is the one that makes me think, okay, so it's like, even if it were, like, just kill him, I, I don't think that's possible now. That's what I think they're trying to get at as well. It's just like, even if he, Deku wanted to just overpower him, we're past the point of you doing that at this point. He's too strong, which I feel like I wish they kind of led with, but the desperation play here makes a lot of sense. It's like, look, we've seen that attacks from the inside can do a lot of damage, and the fact that they're using how you gotta do a smooth transfer of power or else that could literally have his limbs, it, it's literally the explanation from the beginning. His limbs could shoot off. He could literally just start dying from the sheer power of what he's been given. And essentially, transferring the abilities one at a time, but transferring them hard. You're essentially turning all for one for all into ammunition. Just firing them off at him. It's just like, you want my quirks? Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> because you can't really guard from that perspective. I mean, you can. We've seen you to a certain degree can, but you, it's hard to control people's wills. But my question ultimately becomes, will Deku lose all of One For All? Most of it and just be left with the super strength. I could see that happening. Or maybe he'll still have some left over. I mean, I could see this going majorly two ways. He keeps the super strength, what he started out with, or he loses it all except the stockpiling quirk. And so he begins to cycle anew, and he deceives people by having them think, oh, he doesn't have the power anymore. He's completely quirkless. But in truth, he has the ability to pass on power. That, I could see that making for a decent ending to all of this. I mean, it's set up. A lot of this is set up. I love the fact that, shoot, we're using things even from the beginning of the story, and it's all coming back around, and using the very nature of One For All as a way of fighting back. I kinda like that. I really hope Horikoshi can stick the landing, cause I know a lot of people are like feeling iffy about where this is all going. Some people saying that, ah, it's been going on too long, this, that, and the other. I'm someone who doesn't mind that. If this is how the author feels that he needs to go, Fine. Though if he's being pressured to keep it going, that, that's a little less, uh... But I come from a time where a lot of manga had a tendency to either never reach a conclusion, or have a completely unsatisfactory conclusion. One that doesn't really capitalize on everything that was kind of leading up to the finale. For me, My Hero Academia, it's been leading up to a finale. Everything we've seen, everything we've been through, for better or for worse, I'm kind of okay with it. Some things I don't love as much as others, but nothing I out and out hate. But, as with Attack on Titan, Whereas I didn't hate the finale of that, a lot of people did. So I'm interested to see where things go. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What will Deku be left with? Will this plan work? I mean, it would make sense as a final hurrah for all these lost souls who still exist in some way within Deku. But what will that mean for Tomura in the end? Even should they do this? Even should they get through? What then? I wanna hear from you. So like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I've been Deuce Diz Then, and I hope to see you later. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>